What does this park offer that's different from other parks? A whole variety of uh, habitats. There's a lot of stuff going on there in nature that uh, you know we have no control over, uh, but uh, we need to just provide a, a space for it to happen and it will happen. Sand Creek was a parcel of 103 acres uh, that uh, was used uh, by the city of Durham uh, as a sewage treatment plant uh, with the passage of the, uh, the, the Clean Water Act, it was closed. In the late 1980s, a group of, of citizens in Durham started to worry about the future of New Hope Creek. We uh, uh, persuaded the uh, city and county of Durham, uh, the uh, town council of Chapel Hill, and uh, uh, Orange County to kick in some money. They hired as a consultant a man named Ken Coulter. This land, uh, had Ken Coulter and other members of the committee uh, managed to persuade the city to uh, create a nature park and nature education center. Uh, after the park was built uh, in the, uh, the early 1980s, uh, nobody used it. And you have a park that nobody uses, it becomes a magnet for uh, crime and uh, uh, mischief of all sorts. So fun. You just yeah. shovel chips and put them in a little bit. That's it's it. It's like making a sand castle, basically, like just big, it's like a big sandbox. Well, the thing that I like about it is it's, it's all natural. Um, I don't, you know, don't get me wrong. I always think it's sure to come out here and play, and, and the pet lovers like it because they're not a, a lot of Put a lot slides and stuff like that to interfere with the people walking their dogs and letting their dogs go and just enjoy. So, Frank, how often do you come to this park? Twice a day. Do you bring your dogs both back? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> they, uh, there's a lot of space here, a lot of open sky. What and do they, your dogs love most about the park? Oh, uh, what do they love most about it? That trail right over there. What we call the service road. They uh, they find everything up there. It has a very diverse wildlife. That's one of the first things that attracted me to this place. I mean, growing up in Massachusetts, I really saw red-tailed hawks or deer more than one at a time every every two years. But here, there's everything, including my new favorite, the great blue heron. A lot of them here. We have beaver, we have otter, we have fox, a lot of deer, 
and this is still one of the biggest uh, burning hot spots in the southeast. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, regularly for the two years that I've been tearing down, well, yeah. over two years, I don't know exactly how long. <laughs> what appeals to you about Sandy Creek? It's got a good habitat for birds, lakes, streams, open areas, a lot of different habitat. Yeah. How, kind of, how many kinds of birds do you see here? Uh, the last couple of days I've been seeing about 31, 32 species a day. Is that pretty good? Actually? Well, that's visually and also hearing too. I don't see them all, but about 30, 30, 32 species a day. You saw an immature golden eagle just a little bit ago. So way overhead. And if a planetary warbler, a bright yellow warbler, it's because it's just the first of many that are going to be coming through as migration proceeds. It's, it's a great cool hair to find. In the sky, mm. just a bird. There it is, yeah. above the trees. You'll never get it. Nope. <laughs> it's, it's, it's got a nest over there, a nest over there on the top. You don't think of a huge waiting bird living high up in the trees, but you can then top it over there and see its nest. My wife's mother had uh, passed away about 30 years ago from ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. It occurred to me that uh, watching butterflies is one thing you can do uh, without any movement at all. Uh, in honor of the butterflies, I have a monarch butterfly festival. Uh, we also uh, work closely with the Hispanic community, the Embassy of Mexico in Raleigh, and the Honorary Council of Canada uh, for North Carolina, as well as the mayor of Durham. Uh, they spoke, they all really uh, made the parallel between the migration of the butterflies and the migration of people uh, throughout the three uh, North American countries. And uh, actually the monarch butterfly is uh, the symbol of the environmental treaty that's part of the NAFTA free trade agreement and appears on their stationery. And we are now certified uh, nationally as a monarch butterfly way station. The past few years, we've had a large population uh, migrate, uh, hatch and just flood the place. But that's always a, always an exciting time here. I love the, love the monarchs. We are about ready to start the last of, well, not the final phase, but uh, we're going to be paving from all the way around to the concrete pad up here to raise the $30,000. We need to do that. And uh, we've got to raise a little bit more money to finish it. It'll go all the way to the street. We'll have some handicapped parking. and It'll all be ADA accessible so it can be used for wheelchairs and this type of thing. stuff going on there in nature that uh, you know we have no control over uh, but uh, we need to just provide a, 
a space for it to happen and it will happen. nature a lot and I like animals like I've never I've, I've seen those very few times I like them how do you feel when you're out in nature happy yeah Thank you.